What's up guys, this is Sambi Gaming and today I'm going to be bringing you all my own personal review of Batman Episode 1 made by Telltale. Well, first things first, how's the actual game? See, the answer isn't that simple because there's so many elements that have gone into making this one game. You got a customizable story, you've got branching story paths, you've got different gameplay elements. There's like so much into this one game that not everyone will be satisfied by it. If you like Batman, if you're a die-hard fan of Batman and if you like a customized original story that you can tailor to your own way, then by any means this game is for you. But if you're the type of person who wants gameplay, gameplay as in the elements that we've seen in Arkham City or Arkham Asylum, no. You won't probably like this game. But yeah, if you're a die-hard Batman fan, then go for this by all means. We'll be looking into story and gameplay in depth later on in this video. Now, what I like about companies like Rocksteady and Warner Brother Games is that they make their own customized Batsuit, their own Batmobile, and basically their own take on how they want their characters to be like in this particular environment. In Telltale's Batman game, it's... Well, it's not that different. The design of the Batsuit is... Okay, it's not the greatest that I've ever seen. I think the greatest would have to go to either Arkham City or Arkham Knight. But they did try their best and it shows. In the beginning of the game, you get an option to choose what type of color you want the Batman gadgets to represent. And I like that because Batman can ch interchange his glowing eyes to that particular color and it's it adds customizability which I really like. As far as the Batmobile goes, well, it's good. I won't spoil it for you, but the way the Batmobile is introduced in the game, it was really, really good. I, I love that. I love that so much. And that's where Telltale still manages to impress, you know. It's like, the Batmobile has been customized and used in so many scenarios. There, We have Zack Snyder using it, we have Christopher Nolan, we have the games, but this one has its own take on it and I really loved it. Now, this thing I did not expect from Telltale. The enemies are your generic freaking bad guys. They have no emotions or no particular, you know, spin on it. They are so dried down. They are so dumb. They have even the same character models for each and every one of them. Like, you're taking the bad guys down, but they all look the same. There is no interaction. There is nothing. The enemies cannot be more lame. Telltale, what the hell are you doing with your video games? You are so good. Your Walking Dead franchise, your Wolf of Monks Us franchise. Even your, okay, your Game of Thrones was not that good, but come on, like, their enemies were pretty, like, varied, and I like that. Now, there was this scene towards the end where I had to take down every single thug in front of me. And then I was surprised because that same thug came back to life or something using the Lazarus Spit or whatever, and he started attacking me again. I'm like, what? So there's there's so much laziness. I did not like that one bit, and I think Telltale should improve that for its next episode for sure. So this is what I hate about Telltale. They introduce their own story, they introduce their own game, they have their own episodes. Three months later, they make a new episode. Four months after that, they make a new episode, and then in a span of one year, they complete their entire story. Stop doing this now, Telltale. Listen to me. When you make your game, do not introduce different episodes over extended months, please. See, when you're playing this game, whenever, whenever you're playing an episode, you feel so indulged in that episode. You don't want that episode to end. And after it ends, you want to play the next one immediately. But then you realize that you have to wait for some time before you can play it. During that period, when the episode, when episode 1 ends and episode 2 is out, you lose all interest. And then episode 2 is here, you play episode 2 again, and then you end it, and then this feeling comes back again. Then you have to wait for episode 3. A lot of my friends are not buying this game right now just because of this reason. Your business model is not good. You need to change that. You're selling a $25 game and you're only giving a 2 hours worth of content. People don't want to spend 25 bucks just to play 2 hours. You have to understand that. We can buy, we can buy like so many Blu-rays or DVDs for that same amount of money. That is the main reason why 
I will tell every one of you who are watching right now or everyone who's undecided if they should buy this game, do not buy this game right now. Wait till all of the episodes are out. By then you'll even have a discount or something. Play the game then. Do not play the game now. You won't miss out on, mu on much. If you're a huge Batman fan and you can't wait, then just play the game. By all means, I won't stop you. But do not, if you're just like waiting for a new game to come out or just want to play a Batman game just, just because, don't buy this game right now. Now, the voice acting. Say hi, Bruce. Amazing. Beyond any doubt, this was the best cast that Telltale could ever come up with. You've got Richard McGonagall, who was Sully from the Uncharted franchise. He he plays a uh, Carmen Falcone, and then you've got like Erin Yvette, who plays Vicky Vale in this series, and she was Molly from the Walking Dead franchise, and uh, Sasha from the Tales from Borderlands franchise. You even got Laura Bailey, who was who was an infamous second son as Fetch, I believe, and then for Batman. You got Troy Baker, man. You got Sam from Uncharted. He's like Joker from Arkham Origins. He's Robin from Batman Arkham City. He's Joel from The Last of Us. You've got Troy Baker. Of course, you're gonna have the best voice acting in a video game, period. And I love that so much. They tried their absolute best to indulge you in this experience and it really, really shows. They do an amazing job. Kudos to Telltale for hiring an amazing, amazing cast of voice actors. Now, if you're buying a Telltale game and if you're expecting graphics like, oh my god, like Crisis 3 or, you know, Arkham Knight, if you can run that on PC, which you probably can't. So, you probably expect, like, tessellation and anti-lazing and stuff like that, but no. Telltale is not famous for its amazing graphics. It's famous for its simple yet elegant design. I liked that Batman episode 1 had a comic book feeling to it, much like all Telltale games, but this was a bit more visualized, I would say. There were more bright colors. Like, you can't just judge this game on graphics alone because there are so many elements in a Telltale game and it, it never, ever advertises it over graphics. Both targets could have been shot from here. The gameplay is horrible. You cannot even move properly in this game. In the other games, you could actually like go downstairs or interact with different people or talk or stuff like that. You can't do that in this game. There are only like one or two instances where you can actually walk as either Bruce Wayne or Batman and just interact with people but even that is so dumbed down. It's like they're targeting an entirely different genre right here. The, the, okay, so you have your standard um, quick time events if you want to punch people or whatever. You have the option to choose whatever words you want to say and I liked how the entire story can be influenced over that particular choice. Like you can be your own type of Batman. You can be either the either the Christian Bale Batman, you know, the detective Batman who's not beating up people that much or you can just go all full on Ben Affleck and just murder anyone you see. Okay, you can't murder in this game obviously but you can brutalize them so that's good. But oh yeah and there's there are two more things. Um, quick time events so if you can like press the button quickly or in a particular order you get an access to a special move that you can do but there's no really there's no payoff on that move to be honest. And the other thing is that they have their own spin on detective mode that you've seen in the Arkham franchise. But it's so dumbed down, like the detective mode in the Arkham series was so much better. I don't know why they try to copy that. The game could have benefited without that, but I don't know. I am not a fan of this gameplay. I did not like it. Whatever exploded did so with enough force to obliterate the person standing next to it. But the chemicals themselves were inert. Not explosive. Well, it appears to have made a pretty big boom. If I had to review this game on the story, uh, I would give it a 10 out of 10. You heard that right? A solid 10 out of 10. The story is fantastic. It keeps you just 
involved in the entire experience. You don't want the story to end. And that is where this shines the most. From the very first scene towards the ending, it is consistently good throughout. You keep getting surprised by these amazing characters, these interactions. The, the will they want this storyline of Batman and Catwoman, the alliance you have with Harvey Dent, the seemingly unstable alliance you have with the Gotham Police Department. See, this story starts where Batman has dis sorry, Bruce Wayne has discovered that he's Batman and it just goes on from there and you mold what kind of Batman you want to become. Isn't that like so cool? You like just decide for yourself what kind of Batman you want Gotham to be run by. It is so good. I can't st spoil the story for you obviously but trust me when I say this. The story is amazing. You won't be disappointed if you're a Batman fan. If you're not a Batman fan. Regardless of that you will enjoy this story. And the story is the main reason why you will be so disappointed. Now. After keeping everything in mind, I'm gonna give Batman episode 1 made by Telltale a 7 out of 10. See, if this game was a bit cheaper to get or if this game had more content then I would give it an 8 or a 9. But you're only playing 2 hours so I don't think it deserves more than a 7. Now it will be unfair for me to judge this entire franchise just based on one game so that's why I'm giving this episode a 7 out of 10. If the same level of like voice acting and the same content and the same story is given to us in all of the future episodes, this game will be like a 9 out of 10 easily. But the main thing that's holding this game back is its gameplay. The core elements we need, Skeletal please, you need to improve the core elements and I hope that in the future episodes you guys will make an even better Batman game. That's it for today's episode guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like on this video since it helps out a lot. Be sure to subscribe as well. And if you want to see more gameplay or if you want to see more reviews or whatever you want to see more, just leave it down in the comments and I'll respond to you accordingly. Thank you so much and I hope you've enjoyed the episode as well. See you in my next episode guys. Peace out.